Hello everyone, I thought I would do a video here looking at the Grad rocket launcher since it's a weapon we have seen used a lot in the war by both Ukraine and Russia. Now specifically I'm going to take a look at the ammunition and rockets and warheads that the Grad uses. So a quick overview of the Grad first, it entered service in 1963. It basically consists of 40 rocket tubes fitted on a truck chassis. Originally a Ural 375D. This was replaced in 1976 with a more powerful Ural 4320. A 6x6 truck gives the Grad cross-country mobility. There are other truck platforms for different variants but the general idea is the same and the more commonly one is the Ural 375D. So the Grad was designed to attack an area rather than a point target, saturating an area with multiple projectiles. It can fire these rockets 0.5 seconds apart, so it takes around 20 seconds for the Grad to unload its full payload of rockets. Six Grad launchers can fire 240 rockets in around 20 seconds. After firing, it takes around 10 minutes to reload, so now, onto the rockets. First of all, we'll just take a quick look at the launching sequence. So upon launch, electrical current is applied to the igniter leads. This initiates the igniter, which then ignites the propellant grain. The gas generated by the burning propellant escapes through the nozzles and propels the rocket. The spin lug then imparts an initial spin to the rocket by following a spiral groove in the launcher tube. The folding fins then spring open and lock when they clear the launcher tube. The canted fins stabilize the rocket by maintaining a slow rate of spin. Now we will look into more detail on the rockets themselves. So the Grad fires 122 mm rockets. This image here shows the general layout of a 122 mm rocket as used by the Grad launcher. Not pictured are the Venturis. The 122mm rockets, as used in the Grad, have seven Venturis. We will come to them later. So rocket motors can contain either liquid or solid fuel, but the BM-21 systems only contain solid rocket fuel. Unlike a missile, an unguided rocket doesn't have the ability to adjust its trajectory in flight, so once fired, the rocket can't alter its course. So let's take a closer look at the layout of the rocket. So at the top, we have the fuse. Many Grad warheads, such as high explosive fragmentation warheads, use MRV series impact fuses. These are simple and cheap to make and are very reliable. An impact fuse detonates once it strikes the target and is armed 150 to 400 meters after launch. The fuse has three main roles to ensure safe handling during storage, loading, and launch, to arm itself when it is a safe distance from the launcher, and to ensure that the warhead detonates at the correct time. In the case of high explosive fragmentation warheads, when it hits the target. So the warheads for the 122mm rockets are located just behind the fuse and in front of the rocket motor. The warheads are designed to be robust so that they can withstand handling and the forces produced by firing. The 122mm rockets can carry a variety of different warheads which we will take a look at later. Next, we will look at the rocket motor. The 122mm rocket motor of the Grad rockets consists of a body surrounding solid rocket fuel. This motor has a relatively short burn time of approximately 3 seconds. A major flaw of the Grad is that upon firing, it produces a lot of visible exhaust, tending to make launch sites readily detectable. In addition, depending on the surface that the Grad fires from, the launch of the rockets can generate a cloud of dust and debris upon launch, increasing the visual signature. This makes it extremely difficult to disguise the launch of Grad rockets. 
so the launch site remains vulnerable to threats such as counter-battery artillery fire. This photo on screen now shows a battery of grads firing from an unknown date or time. It gives a general idea of the amount of exhaust emitted. Now the Grad's 122mm rockets aren't able to burn only part of their rocket fuel, so the range of the rockets is increased or decreased by adjusting the angle of the launcher. A rocket fired at a low angle will generally travel further than a rocket fired at a high angle. Now the Venturi. The function of these is to channel and vent the hot propellant gases from the combustion chamber of the rocket motor to the open air, thereby generating thrust which accelerates the rocket to maximum velocity. Some rockets have a single Venturi, but as mentioned the Grad has seven. This diagram here gives an overall view of a Venturi in action and how it works. To maintain stability, a rocket either uses fins or can spin axially. In the case of the Grad rockets, it uses a combination of both. This image here shows the fins at the rear of the rockets. Aerodynamic stability is provided through four wraparound fins at the rear. Once fired, the rocket also spins at a relatively slow speed. The springs of the Grad 122mm rockets are spring-loaded. They are held in place by a fin strap which is burnt through when the rocket launches. As soon as the rear of the rocket leaves the launch tubes, the springs push the fins in place which stabilises the rocket during flight. It's a very simple but effective and clever method. So now let's take a look at individual rockets and warheads carried by the Grad. This chart here gives an overall overview of some of the different warheads and rocket types and as you can see the BM-21 Grad can fire different projectiles for different purposes from fragmentation high explosive shells to smoke dispensers and incendiary shells. The range of a projectile also differs from version to version. So we're going to take a bit more of a look into some of these. First we will take a look at the high explosive fragmentation ones. These are optimised to target troops, both sheltered and in the open. They are also able to target soft skinned vehicles and APCs, artillery, mortar batteries and command posts. The standard 9M22 rocket has a steel high fragmentation warhead. This warhead contains 6.4 kilograms of TGAF5 explosive. It generates around 3,920 pre-fragmented fragments. The warhead itself is designed to have internal scoring, allowing it to fragment into 1,640 fragments, each weighing 2.4 grams. The 9M22's warhead is double skinned with the outer layer lightly scored to avoid damage during launch. This outer skin is designed to produce an additional 2,280 fragments, each weighing 2.9 grams. This warhead is used on a number of high fragmentation rounds of the Grad. The 9M22 has a range of between 5 km to 20.4 km. Now we'll look at the 9M22M. This can be fired from the Grad or from a single tube launcher. It is shorter and lighter than the 9M22 and has less range, 10.8 km. However, a variant called the 9M22MD has an additional rocket motor, boosting its range to around 15 km. The 9M22U is one of the more common variants of the rocket used. This features an updated rocket motor. It's essentially an updated version of the 9M22. The warhead again features TGF AF5 explosive, but later models used AIX2 explosive. This has a range of 20.1 kilometers. Now we will look at an unusual variant of the 9M22U, called the 9M53F. This one has a warhead designed to separate from the rocket motor over the target. 
This is then stabilized by a parachute and is equipped with a multi-function fuse that can either detonate on impact or can be set to detonate the warhead at a preset height of a few meters above ground. Once detonated, it produces 2450 fragments that impact in a circular pattern. It has a range of up to 20.5 kilometers. The 9M521 was introduced in 2011. This has an enhanced high explosive fragmentation warhead, featuring 1000 pre-fragmented 5.5 gram fragments and 2440 semi-ready 3 gram fragments. This has a much higher range, able to hit targets of up to 40 kilometers. The 9M522 was also introduced in 2011. This has a high range of up to 37.5 kilometers. So that's a selection of the high explosive fragmentation rounds. We will now take a look at some of the other more unusual rounds used by the Grad. 9M18 is one of these unusual Grad 122mm rockets. This one is used for dispensing POM2S anti-personnel landmines. One rocket can dispense five mines. So upon descending, the rocket separates and the mines are pushed out of the base of the rocket. Once dispensed, the landmine is armed. Upon landing, six spring-loaded metal fins bring the mine into an upright position. A few seconds later, the top is ejected, releasing four spring-loaded spools of tripwire. It's quite a clever bit of kit. 9M2KK is another landmine dispensing variant of 122mm rocket. This one, however, carries anti-vehicle PTM3 landmines. One rocket can carry three mines. On descending, the rocket separates and the mines are pushed out of the base. PTM3 is a high explosive magnetic influence mine that uses shaped charge effect against armoured vehicles. 9M22S is an incendiary rocket designed for use against personnel and flammable targets. So the payload of this one features 180 unfused ML5 magnesium cups filled with a thermite type mixture. These are packed in matrix. Each one has a burning time of two minutes. They are ignited on ejection by an ignition charge. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the 9M42. This is the illumination round. The flare ejects from the base and is suspended from a parachute. Once ejected, the candle burns for 90 seconds. So there we have a selection of the rounds and rockets and warheads used by the Grad. I thought it was worth taking a look at some of the rockets since the system is widely used in Ukraine. And rather than look at the Grad itself, I thought looking at its rockets and warheads would be a would be a bit different and a bit interesting. I hope you enjoyed the video. I may do another video on the Grad and rocket artillery in general focusing on its accuracy soon. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much and take care everyone.